The top seed faces her biggest challenge yet, and an American is guaranteed to be in the Women's French Open final. I'm here to preview the semi-finals at Roland Garros. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the tennis vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Right from the beginning, this has been a very unpredictable tournament, and one of these clashes I am finding incredibly hard to predict, so this should be fun. I'm going to begin with the more unexpected semi final, which is world number 10, Sloane Stevens versus world number 13, Madison Keys. Both players won their quarterfinal matches in straight sets to make the semi finals. Stevens came through against Daria Kasatkina, and Madison Keys came through against Yulia Potensi of Kazakhstan. This will be a rematch of last year's US Open final. Without further ado, let's take a look at the roads each of them have taken to this stage. So starting by looking at Key's run. Neither of these two players had ever been beyond the fourth round at the French Open in years prior to this one. However, Keys has been playing like an old timer on the clay. Starting off with two straight set wins over fellow Americans in the first two rounds, Sasha Vickery and Caroline Dolhide. Neither of those two players managed to win more than six games against Keys, so she got herself off to a very comfortable start there. Next came 21st seed Naomi Osaka, the Indian Wells champion, and looking pretty decent at the French Open. Nevertheless, Keys came through a tight tie break in the second set and managed to close that one out in straights. That one was pretty hard to call, given that both of them are young players with big games, big serves, but Keys really handled that one pretty well, especially in the first set. A deceptively tricky clash came next in the fourth round when Keys took on Mihaela Bozanis who had beaten Elena Svitolina, who obviously had won the Rome title prior to the event. You have to praise the focus and concentration of Keys to come through in straight sets once again, only dropping five games. And then she actually had her toughest clash yet against unseeded Yulia Potintseva in the quarterfinals. Potintseva had been to the quarters before at the French Open. She has a game made for clay courts, very consistent, making her opponents run and move, mixing it up, throwing the slice in. But Keys demonstrated a lot of patience and wasn't put off by Patinsova's general energeticness and exuberance on the courts. Basically the way she celebrates pretty wildly after every point. Keys broke Patinsova as she served for the first set and then played a really good tie break to come through that opening set and then finished Patinsova off in straights. While Patinsova isn't seeded, Keys played those big points well and she is into the semis without dropping a set and that has happened pretty under the radar. And now moving on to Sloane Stevens who got the better of Keys in the US Open final. While Stevens has dropped a set, the straight sets win she has compiled have come more dominantly than Keys, which is incredible really given that Keys has won so many straightforward matches. In rounds one and two combined, she dropped a total of six games before coming up against her big test in Camilla Giorgi. The Italian who has never really fulfilled her potential blows very hot and cold, but is capable of some really precise and accurate attacking tennis. Stevens steeled herself in the final stages there and came through 8-6 in the decider, and since then she has not looked in trouble. Annette Kontovic was in great form this clay court season. She'd beaten Venus Williams twice, Caroline Wozniacki. She was taking down big names, but Stevens was not troubled at all by the 25th seed. And then Daria Kasatkina had come past Caroline Wozniacki to make the quarterfinals, had really composed herself very well mentally in that match. But Stevens absolutely ripped her apart, showed that her channeled aggression was no match for Kasatkina's more conservative game, and quite frankly, Stevens has breezed her way into the last four. In terms of the form of both Stevens and Keys, since their surprise runs to the US Open final, Keys has not really been on the scene that much at all. Despite being pinpointed when she was younger for her massive serve, her big ground strokes, her raw talent, and generally just her insane promise, Keys has struggled with injury throughout her career, struggled for consistency, and struggled for mental strength. Her run to the US Open final, which should have been something that was built up to progressively, actually came as a bit of a surprise, and even in the clay court season she's been pretty quiet. Besides Charleston, where she made the semi-finals on green clay, Keys has not gone beyond the third round at any other clay court event she played prior to the French Open. Stevens is the same, actually. Neither woman had performed that well on dirt ahead of the French Open, and maybe that's been key here, because no one's really known what to expect from them. Them, given that they've been a bit quiet, but both of them are capable of top-level tennis on their day. Both of them hit pretty hard, can be very precise, so Stevens as well hadn't been beyond the third round of any of the clay court events that she played prior to Paris. However, she has become 
one of those players who produces their best tennis more often on the biggest stages. When Stevens first began to break through in 2013, she showed that she could bring magic at the Grand Slams, but she was failing to reproduce that elsewhere, which is why her ascent up the rankings took a bit longer than some people anticipated. But now she has that maiden Grand Slam win under her belt, which came so impressively last year after she'd been out with injury for so many months. Stevens, while she may struggle on the outer tournament, is starting to feel more at home at the Grand Slams again. She did lose in the first round of the Australian Open, but many of the WTA's maiden Grand Slam champions especially if they are unexpected champions, they tend to go on a bit of a wonder after their maiden win. So Stevens kind of got that out of her system at the Australian Open. And since then she has been up and down, but she went all the way to the title at the Miami Open. Stevens beat a really impressive list of players on the way to that Miami Open title. She beat Gobini Muguruza, Yelena Ostapenko, Victoria Azarenka. So both players competing very well in Paris, but I would say that Stevens, due to the Georgi match, has probably been tested more mentally and she's shown very good concentration in dominating the majority of her encounters. Keys as well, given that she has struggled with her head game in times past, has done considerably well to win all her matches in straight sets, and against Pasintseva I think that was a great challenge to come through because on the run her power and her precision is not as great, it's no good being able to hit those marks and being able to rain down big serves if once the ball is back in play you can't actually get yourself in the position to execute the shot she wants to hit. But Key seems really ready for what was coming at her from Patinsova. She was very composed, she would take a deep breath and move on if she messed up. So Stevens and Keys have both come past slower hitting, more defensive style players to reach this collision. The thing that would make this one difficult to call is the fact that Keys has been looking more composed. She's had Lindsay Davenport around giving her a bit of advice. She's a very calming presence for Keys to have. But Stevens, as we saw at the US Open, is absolutely lethal when she's got her eye on the prize and she is gradually becoming very comfortable in these later stages of big events. Looking at their head-to-head, -head, they have faced off twice and Stevens has won both of their meetings in straight sets. At the US Open, it was a bit of a washout, people had been hyping up this All-American final, but Keys absolutely went to pieces on that stage, the biggest stage of her career. It was a maiden Grand Slam final for both of them, but it just seemed that Stevens had had the steadier rise, was in the zone, and was just that much more confident in her ability than Keys. So in their previous meetings, Stevens only dropped six games to Keys in Miami in 2015, and also on hard courts, only three games in the final in Flushing Meadows. Both players hit more winners to unforced errors against their counter-punching opponents in the semi-finals, which is positive. On this one, I'm purely going to base my prediction on the fact that Stevens is getting comfortable on these stages, and she has beaten Keys dominantly in the past. Stevens has also been to the fourth round at the French Open four times prior to this, so she does have that experience on this particular clay, whereas while Keys has had experience on clay before, she hasn't necessarily done so on a Grand Slam stage. My gut instinct originally wanted to give Keys the benefit of the doubt, however I am aware that I've watched more of Keys playing this fortnight than Stevens, and that probably has an impact on that. So for this particular match, on this occasion, I am going to predict Sloane Stevens to reach the final in straight sets. Moving on now to what I think I can safely call the big semi-final, unless you're American. It's top seed and last year's finalist Simona Halep against number three seed and 2016 champion Garbinie Muguruza. Muguruza absolutely breezed into the final four with a 6-1, 6-2 thrashing of Maria Sharapova, but Halep had it a lot more difficult. She lost a first set tie break to Angelique Kerber before coming through 6-3, 6-2 in the final two sets. When I say this one is too close to call, I mean this one is too close to call. I know it's a phrase that I've used a lot in the past, but one of these players is looking mentally fairly strong, which I didn't think I would be saying at the beginning of the tournament, and one of them is looking physically very strong, which I also didn't think I would be saying at the beginning of the tournament, because Muguruza was under the radar ahead of Paris, and that is just the way she likes it. Ahead of both of the Grand Slams she previously won, Muguruza wasn't on anybody's watch list ahead of the tournament. In fact, when she won the French Open in 2016, she nearly bowed out in round one to Anna Karolina Schmiedlova. So this is the position she likes to be in to perform, and that is 
definitely showed in Paris. I like some Madison Keys, Muguruza is yet to drop a set in Paris, and like Sloane Stevens in the straight set matches that she has won, she has won pretty dominantly. Muguruza opened against a former French Open finalist in Svetlana Kuznetsova. Kuznetsova not in fantastic form at present, but still a player who knows what it takes to produce on this surface at this particular tournament. Her second round opponent, Fiona Ferro, is probably a more difficult opponent than would first meet the eye, because she's not a player that Muguruza would really have been aware of in terms of game style. But she came through that one in straight sets and then absolutely smashed Samantha Stoza, who is really struggling for form at the moment and who has won a Grand Slam in the past. Pretty much got a walkover in the fourth round when Lazia Sorenko retired at the beginning of their clash, but she did not let that throw her rhythm as Maria Sharapova clearly did when she got a walkover past Serena Williams. Sharapova was the 28th seed. She is certainly not at the standard that saw her win two French Open titles in the past. However, she has been playing her best tennis since a return from a drugs ban last year in recent weeks. In 2014, Muguruza won the first set 6-1 in her clash with Sharapova and then almost let her nerves get the better of her in losing a close second set and then falling in three sets. Four years later, with two Grand Slams and a wealth of experience to her name, she got the opportunity to turn that around and against Sharapova, she did not flinch. Sharapova did give her a lot of help, hitting a whopping 27 unforced errors to only 10 winners. Muguruza herself ended the match with more unforced errors than winners, so people who were saying how amazing Muguruza played might have gone a bit over the top because I think Sharapova made her look more impressive than she was. What was great about Muguruza was her total focus from the moment the players walked out on course until the moment the match ended. She was very fast on the defence, she was getting to every ball and placing that ball well with good depth and placement, making Sharapova play an extra ball, and often Sharapova was sending that ball wide. Because of Sharapova's erraticness on the day, she couldn't afford to go for drop shots or that kind of thing to make Muguruza move because she couldn't guarantee that she was going to nail them and that exposed a lack of depth really in Sharapova's game because she couldn't come up to the net because she's not reliable there so she had to stay rallying from the baseline which was perfect for Muguruza and however Sharapova played it shows a big difference from the Muguruza of 2014 and the Muguruza of today. Halep meanwhile looked in danger in her first round match. She went five love down in the first set of her match with Alison Risk who is not known as a clay court player at all. That was pretty much tightness and nerves from Halep coming out early in the tournament knowing she had finalist points to defend and having been one of the clear-cut best players of the clay court season so far. In fact at this point it's worth noting that of the four semi-finalists Halep has far and away the best clay court records on the year despite not having won a title. Once she found her groove in that match Halep tightened the screws quickly to roll through and that took decent mental strength to win so many games in a row and close it out and since then her composure has been great. Up until the quarterfinals after that Halep didn't really look troubled. She did not lose more than five games in a match against Taylor Townsend, Andrea Petkovic and number 16 seed Elise Mertens, all of them notable names and Mertens particularly having performed well this year. But despite her ability on clay, despite the fact I've always thought she will win a Grand Slam title, I was not fully convinced by Halep's form because Mertens did not put up much of a fight and Halep was still racking up unforced errors a bit and getting less off the hook. So it didn't really surprise me when Angelique Kerber, the number 12 seed in very good form raced out to a fall of lead in their quarterfinal. And this is where it looks very promising for Halep now because what she did very well in that match was display her calmness. Halep pulled it back in that first set but lost a disappointing tiebreak after Kerber played very solid. But despite the disappointment there, she did not let it stall her momentum. She broke immediately in the second set and from there she didn't really look back as Kerber began to throw in more errors and become less consistent. Towards the end of the match Halep was going for her shots more, moving into the court more and that's what she needs to do against Muguruza because staying passive and defensive is not going to work. Halep is one of those players who by nature is more of a counterpuncher but she can step in and take the ball on the rise and turn on the attack and that's what she did in the later stages against Kerber on the key points. There is much that could be said about this match but for the sake of time and this video and the fact that there are a ton of things we could talk about I'm mainly going to confine it to this tournament because we know that both Halep and Muguruza can perform on the big stages. What I will say is probably the biggest difference between these two is that Muguruza is not as consistent off the big stages but she can just turn on her precision, her game face, her aggression, her channeled power when she most needs it and that is why she has two Grand Slams to Halep zero because while Halep is consistent all year round as her top ranking suggests, 
she just struggles to sustain her level for a whole seven matches. Skipping straight over to look at their head-to-head -head now, and Garbini Muguruza leads that 3-1. However, Halep's only win was their only meeting on clay, and that came in 2015 on the clay of Stuttgart. Halep lost the first set 3-6, but came back to win 6-1, 6-3. They've only had one meeting since then, which was last year in Cincinnati, and Muguruza absolutely thrashed Halep in the final. As you can see there, two of their four meetings have gone on the distance. This is such a tricky one. I've gone back and forth and back and forth with this one and honestly I really don't know who's going to win. If you were to think of a player to be more successful on clay courts, Halep is probably the player that would come to mind just because of her general consistency on the surface, the way that her game is based around enduring in the long rallies and working out the points. But then Muguruza just knows how to turn it on when she wants to on every single surface. And we can tell that there is something special about Roland Garros for Muguruza because she has been and Serena Williams on this clay in straight sets twice. Another interesting thing to me is that at least since 2013 when she lost to Yelena Jankovic, Muguruza has never lost to a counter-punching player at the French Open. She has only ever really lost to power players. And if she's on her day and Halep's not really feeling it and Halep hit nearly double the number of unforced errors to her win accounts against Kerber, Muguruza could really penalise that. But at the same time, Muguruza hasn't really been pushed yet this tournament and I just wonder if that game face and that mentality of hers that looks so dominant would crumble if she actually came into a battle because Halep has been tested and she has actually shown that she has the mental resolve to come through even though that is what I doubted about her on these major stages. She hasn't always had the physical level but she's had the ability to take a deep breath, stay calm, work out what's going wrong and work her way through the match with more of a smart and crafty way rather than overpowering her opponent. While originally I predicted that either Petra Kvitova or Serena Williams would win the event, once Muguruza got going I thought it looked very much like the Muguruza who had won this event before, who had won Wimbledon before, and looked very dialed in and focused, and once Serena was out of the draw, I thought that Muguruza was going to win this title. And largely due to the way she gave up that lead in the French Open final last year when it was on her racket, really, I wasn't giving Halep too much of a chance this year, even though I knew of her ability on clay. So originally, I would definitely have been going for Muguruza to win this match. However, this has been a fairly close rivalry between these two. And given the way Halep has worked her way through matches so far, it's actually difficult for me to see her losing. I feel that my gut instinct now is to say Halep to come through in three sets. Just sticking to what I thought at the beginning of the tournament that Muguruza was looking good and looking fairly ominous, I'm going to have to stick with her on this occasion, and even though I think she would probably win in straight sets if she were to win this match, I just think Halep is fighting too hard for that to happen, almost. Potentially the worst prediction I've ever made. Garbini and Muguruza to win in three sets. So there we go, that's your preview video. I felt out of practice, it's been a while since I've done one of these now. So do let me know who you think will come through and which final you would like to see at the French Open this year. Hopefully I will be back with more content for you soon, but for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.